Welcome to the ninth episode of our video series on cattle farmer training, brought to you by the Karen Beef Academy. This video series will not only give you a good understanding of cattle farming and what needs to be taken into consideration, but will also assist you in becoming more profitable and sustainable as a cattle farmer. We will cover a wide range of topics throughout this series, aim to inform you on best practice and enlighten you on some new techniques. We will also shed some light on challenges facing cattle farmers and how to overcome them. This episode on the marketing of animals outlines a number of important decisions that need to be made when it comes to marketing and selling your animals, including branding, traceability, and deconing. In South Africa, Cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs are sold through a number of channels which can be divided into two categories, the informal and formal markets. The informal market is where cattle are sold for various reasons such as slaughter, investment, or social functions. The formal markets include auctions, private sales, and abattoirs. Research also shows that smallholder farmers still have very limited market access and are limited to their local auctions. Dealing directly with large commercial beef producers like Karen Beef cuts out the middlemen and offers better market access. By doing so, it will also ensure that you, the farmer, gets the best price for your calves. Certain decisions need to be made when it comes to marketing your animals. These include the animal's age, weight, sex, and breeding status. The main reason for selling animals is for financial gain. The best time to market animals will depend on the type of animal to be sold, namely winners, heifers, cows, and so on. Beef breeds and cross breeds are preferred over dairy breeds because of their better growth ability. Price is usually determined per kilogram of live weight. Beef cattle farmers and communities must develop a health profile for the cattle they sell, thereby reducing the risk of beef measles. Firstly, it is important to maintain good human health on their farms by providing adequate toilets and hand washing facilities that all employees and visitors can use to prevent the contamination of feed banks feed storage areas, ditches, or grazing areas where human waste can become a source of cattle infestation. Secondly, by having good human internal parasite control measures in place through regular deworming of children and adults using remedies effective against human tapeworm. Winners are usually sold to feed lots or people that will background the animal and increase their weight if necessary before they are ready for sale. These animals may be sold either directly to the feedlots or at local auctions. Old or unproductive cattle can also be sold through the trade market. Ideally, you should be marketing your male animals and only the worst of the female animals or unproductive cows and bulls. The rest of the younger female animals will then be used as replacement animals in your herd. Male animals are preferred for feedlots as they tend to grow better than females. Animal hides can also be a source of income. However, if they are damaged by ticks or incorrect branding, the hides will reduce in value quite considerably. Incidentally, branding for traceability purposes is a necessity on all animals before marketing. Branding of letters and numbers is a method of creating a unique identifier on your cows. It is a legal requirement that will help with identification and proof of ownership. Each farmer's brand is unique and needs to be registered with the Registrar of Animal Identification to avoid someone else using the same brand and resulting in confusion when identifying cattle. Branding can be done using extreme heat with a hot iron or by freeze branding. 
This will cause a permanent scar on the animal and cannot be removed or forged. Cattle must be branded or marked by the time they are six months old. The amount of heat applied in hot branding is very important to ensure that the brand mark is easily identifiable. If too cold, only the hair is burnt and the brand will fade over time. If the iron is too hot, however, the area around the intended letter will be burnt as well and the brand will appear smashed. Animals are usually branded on the hind leg, rump or shoulder. Winners that will be sold to feed lots should ideally be branded only on the hind leg to retain the value of the hide. Incorrect branding placement will be penalized when selling these animals. The aim is to bend only the skin of the animal and not through the skin and onto the muscle, causing muscle and meat damage. LITS SA is a traceability system designed to track the movement of animals. The process of implementing the system involves several steps. The first step is the registration of all stakeholders on the LITS SA system. This includes not only producers, but all livestock owners, auction crawls, abattoirs, feedlots, and livestock handlers. Details for registration include the name of the farm or business, the owner's identity number, contact number, and address where the animals are kept. If more than one property is used for farming purposes, each farm will have to be registered separately on the system. Next, the official radio frequency ear tags or RFID, which contain information pertaining to a producer's entire herd, are entered into the system's database. Information linked to the ear tag includes the animal's breed, color, and sex. An animal's vaccination status for controlled diseases, such as FMD, will also have to be indicated. The RFID ear tag, which looks like a button and not the traditional swing type ear tags, is attached to the left ear. The producer's ear tag is then attached to the animal's right ear. Cattle with horns can create various problems when transported in trucks, handled in the feedlot for processing, or where neck clamps are used. These problems include carcass bruising, dehorning stress resulting in reduced growth and increasing the risk of infection. Horned cattle also require more trough space than a polled animal. There are two methods of dehorning. The first is the caustic stick method, which is only suitable for small holders with a few cattle. Before the calves are 10 days old, caustic soda in a stick or paste form is applied to the horn parts. The horn parts need to be dry before the calf starts to suckle again as the caustic soda can damage the udders. Secondly, the hot iron method whereby the horn forming tissue at the base of the horn part is burnt with a deep budding iron. The deep budding iron is heated up using gas or fire. The calf is three to six weeks old. If the bud is large at this time, the tip needs to be removed first before burning. Take note that the caustic stick and hot iron method can only be used in calves under two months of age before the horns attach to the skull. Dehorning cattle when they are adults is usually avoided but can be done by a veterinarian. According to the South African Feedlot Association, the ideal winner calf should be dehorned and parasite-free with no high damage. The group of animals offered should be uniform in body mass and type. Steers and heifers should be grouped separately where possible. Otherwise, they will be discriminated against according to the percentage of heifers in the group. On average, male animals grow 20% better than females. The ideal body weight should be 200 to 240 kilograms. If above 250 kilograms, the winner is considered too heavy and has a risk of cutting teeth before marketing or becoming too heavy before they reach a fat grade of 2 to 3.
Heavier cars are purchased on a sliding scale and handled on an ad hoc basis. A healthy calf can perform to its full potential. However, animals that are sick or have defects such as blindness, leg or hoof defects, and others can lose up to 20% of their growth potential in the feedlot. The ideal soluble winner is a male that weighs between 200 and 240 kilograms and of a breed known for economic growth on a feedlot ration. Buyers will discriminate and thus offer less for a group with a high percentage of heifers, any older heifers, heavy calves weighing over 250 kilograms, and calves from measles infested areas. These will be penalized. Thank you for watching. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please follow our social media channels for more and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to access the other videos in this series. Until next time, goodbye.